Hello and welcome to April's Running Channel monthly show brought to you by our friends at Wiggle. Can you believe this is the fourth one of these that we've done, Rick? Seems like only yesterday when we started. Well, you know what they say, time flies when you're talking about running, even if you can't actually run at the moment. Anyway, here's what's coming up. So, Rick, you've got a couple of friends with you this month. Yeah, what do you think of my socks? Uh, well, they're not on your feet. Anna, why have they not designed crutches that have pads for handles yet? Three pairs of socks rolled up inside out with some gaffer tape taped up to keep them safe. <laughs> Should we just let everyone know why it is that you're on crutches? Yeah, so I've had a chondroplasty basically on my left knee uh, and had the operation a couple of weeks ago. I'm in one piece, but I'm partial weight for four to six weeks. Right. Yeah. No running. No running whatsoever. For oh. our, probably quite a bit longer after we that. We feel your pain, but you're going to be documenting it all for the running channel. Going to be documented for TRC and fingers crossed, I'll be back at some point in 2021. But probably not for the first park run. Damn. This means I can probably beat him at something now. Anyway, right, let's get stuck in with the new launches for this month. Hoka One One have released another new shoe this month, the Arahi 5. Now this shoe is a bit of a contradiction as it has max cushioning but minimal weight. Go figure, this is a complete upgrade from the Arahi 4. It has a pull tab for easy on and off and a refined collar shape to alleviate pressure on the Achilles. As a stability shoe, it's a great fit for moderate overpronating runners given the extra support built into the shoe. It doesn't feel like it's designed specifically for races or speed work, but rather for long distance and easy pace run days. On to Innovate Next, who've just launched their new Trailfly Ultra G 300 Max shoes with the world's first graphene enhanced foam. Now, graphene is the key word here. It's the toughest material in the world. The G Fly midsole in the shoe is made up of graphene enhanced foam, which Innovate says gives it a 25% higher energy return than industry standard EVA foam, and that it lasts much longer too. So, high mileage runners, this could be the shoe for you as compared to the average recommendation to replace your shoes after five to six hundred kilometers. Innovate says one of their testers has clocked over double this distance and the midstop is still going strong. And we got the toughest person that I know, Ali Bailey, to put this shoe through its paces this month. So just be sure to check out her ultra in them along the Chalkland Way in Yorkshire if you haven't seen it already. Also new this month is the launch of the Metaspeed Sky from ASICS, along with the announcement of the Metaspeed Edge, which will be available to buy in June. The interesting thing about these shoes is that the design comes from the formula for running speed. ASICS have taken this formula and researched running styles to create these two shoes to suit the two most popular running styles, which ASICS have named Stride and Cadence. The Metaspeed Sky is designed for stride style runners, who ASICS identify as runners who extend their stride length when going faster, but keep their cadence the same. Whereas the Metaspeed Edge is for runners who increase their stride length and cadence as they get faster. The big question though is why might this be helpful? Well, ASICs say that both shoes look to reduce the number of steps it takes to finish a marathon, with the Metaspeed Sky saving 350 steps from stride style runners and the Metaspeed Edge saving 750 from cadence style runners. Fascinating stuff, and it'll be interesting to see how these shoes perform in the upcoming elite races. Now, that sounded very complicated. So away from shoes, an Ultimate Direction have just launched their new Fast Pack and Fast Pack Her range of packs. If you're looking for adventure this summer, then check these out as the range of sizes covers any trail outing that you want to make. So the pack fits like a vest with storage on the front and back for water, plus anything else you need like extra layers, gels, snacks, etc. The new features and updates include more breathability, larger capacities, quicker access through the main compartment via a two-way zip and there's a lot more customization that you can do to the fit of the pack with vertical sliding straps at the front and a height adjustable waist belt. And finally, Rick. Yes. On to a bit of a book club this month. Ooh. Full disclosure, I'm lucky enough to have run with the authors of all of these books and also count them as friends too. So you first, 
up. Running Through Life's Challenges is uh, by Alistair Jones, who even asked me to write the intro to this one, which wow. was such an incredible honour. This book is packed full of useful tips, stories about running, and Al's lovely inspirational quotes too. So one that you can easily dip in and out of on a rest day. I'm gonna give this one to you. Next up is Waypoints by Rob Martineau, a book about a walk in West Africa, which explores the psychology of adventure, escape, and walking. Another lovely read. And then finally, A Walk from the Wild Edge by Jake Tyler. So Jake featured in a BBC documentary a few years back that you might remember. It was called Mind Over Marathon. So it focused on the positive side of running for our mental health. And this book is Jake's story all about his struggles with his own mental health, coming back from the brink of suicide and then hoofing it around the UK in search of adventure. A wonderful, feel-good read. I'm going to pass all these over to you, Rick, so you can spend some of your recovery time reading about running and having a lot of fun. I can't wait to read your intro. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we're taking a look at running in the news this month. Yep, and we are going to start with a question on everyone's lips. When, and most importantly, how will it be safe to get back to racing again after COVID? Well, lucky for you lot, I had a super interesting chat with a crowd scientist who consults with the big races like New York and Berlin Marathons and Great North Run to see what his take is. If, no, when the races return, you're in for a treat. Because what we see is more PBs. We see a greater environment of just less people putting on a much bigger show when it comes to enthusiasm and everything, because we don't take it for granted anymore. At the same time, with all this social distancing, you will have more space around you. That means, yeah, you can put on your PB basically, or you have more space in order to have a different and improved running experience and that you then have your individual start time rather than one last start. But the whole race will be catered to you and you will feel that every step of the way. Something that isn't financially viable to do forever, but those are the absolute perfect conditions. It's the same way as normally Elliot Kipchoge would start. Now we can let everybody start in this, in this way. A lot of this is based on runners being sensible and reliable. If you're given a start window of a three minute gap, you have to be there and you have to yes. take, you know, you have, otherwise you could mess this up for thousands of people. It works only if we all cooperate. But I mean, some people are better in being um, on time, others not so much. And we know that and we plan for that, such, such as some people don't strike their, um, the finishing time that they plan for themselves. They don't quite hit it, you know, too fast or too slow. And we know, we know that exact spread of like, if we give people an arrival time in the past, if we gave them one, how did they spread and actually make it possible to be there on time? And we cater to that. We don't cater to a, the illusion everybody is on time. However, we need everybody to be at their best or at least be as good as in the last years. Next, onto a potential world record 5K time this month. Triathlete Beth Potter stunned the global audience when she clocked a record-beating road 5K time of 14 minutes and 41 seconds at the podium 5K event in Lancashire. Now that's two seconds faster than the previous world benchmark set by Beatrice Chep Koech. But that time is highly unlikely to be ratified as a UK record for a number of reasons, including the timekeeper not having a national level qualification and there were no drugs testers on site. Absolutely gutting. <laughs> there was more heartbreak in women's athletics this month too, as Charlotte Perdue missed out on selection to the Team GB Tokyo Olympics marathon team. So there's a lot of debate surrounding this because Perdue's PB time is a good minute faster than Steph Twells, who was selected ahead of her. Now, it mostly comes down to an injury that Perdue was recovering from, as neither she nor Steph Twell or Jess Piasecki, who's also been selected, competed in the marathon trials at Kew Gardens last month. Now, with her career on the line and appeals now in the works, and Perdue's coach says that the team shouldn't have been announced until the appeal process had been completed. 
Deselecting an athlete who's already been named for the Games would be unprecedented, though. Before London 2012, British marathon runner Lee Merrion was added to the team after controversially being left out, but he didn't actually replace anyone. And April equals April Fool's Day. Did you get conned by any of the running brands this month? Well, one that stood out for us were these brilliant shoes for dogs from Solomon. The shoe features a paw sock system, which is a built-in mesh sock and Velcro tab that cradles the paw for enhanced stability. And possibly my favorite feature, a smart snack pocket to make the summit treat easily accessible. Did you see any better ones? Or maybe you've got a story for us to feature next month. Let us know in the comments. Now over to Manny in the physio room, who's tackling the Achilles this month. Welcome to the physio room. I'm Manny Ovola, the Running Channel resident physiotherapist. And every month I'll be answering your questions about running injuries and how to improve your running through strength and conditioning. If you're struggling with a particular type of injury, then please do seek medical attention because we can't diagnose your individual problem. However, there are plenty of common running injuries that we can talk about and hopefully help you with. This month, we have a question about your Achilles. Are there any maintenance exercises we can do to strengthen the Achilles and work into our pre post run routine? The Achilles is a tendon and tendons tend to respond to different types of load. Load means either walking, running, jumping, hopping. All these things will help the tendon stiffen and get stronger. The key thing is we need to know what to do when. If we do too much, that can irritate the tendon and it can flare the tendon up. We need to think about building a foundation of strength and we do that by doing heel raises. The Achilles responds really, really well to being loaded. So when we do our heel raises, if we can grab a few things in our home to do that with, that's gonna be good. If you do heel raises on a flat surface, it's actually different to doing it on a step. It's harder on a step. So those two exercises are not the same. We can also change our body position. If you do your heel raises completely vertical, or if you do your heel raises slightly leant forward, that can change the way the tendon responds. In the exercise or heel raise with your body forward, the Achilles is being stretched. It's important to think about which exercise you do and when you do it. The exercises you do before you run may not be the same exercises you want to do after you run. The key thing to loading your Achilles is making sure that you don't have any symptoms and when you are doing any of the exercises, if you do get symptoms, please do stop. I'll just recap. We want to load the tendon with weight because it responds really, really well with weight. The Achilles needs support from muscles higher up we should also think about responsive load, quick load, so jumping and hopping. This type of loading, this bouncing or responsive loading should not be done after you run. We should save this for before you run and make sure we've warmed up before we do any of these exercises. The reason why we should maintain strength in our Achilles is because it's like a spring. Our Achilles has a stretch shortening cycle. If our Achilles is nice and strong and sometimes stiff, what that means is that we get real nice recoil of all the energy that we generate from our muscles. So sometimes if you have a stiff Achilles, may not be a bad thing. The key thing we need to understand is how painful it is. So strengthening your calf muscles and your Achilles is gonna be crucial to help you run, maintain your fitness, and stay injury free. Cheers for that as always, Manny, and stay tuned because Manny's back shortly to take on the treadmill challenge with Zwift. Plus, Rick and I will be answering your running questions in Ask TRC. Next though, my favorite, challenge Rick. <laughs> Well, 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 I bet you <laughs> thought because of your injury, you'd be getting out of this this month, Rick. 
Actually, yeah, I did. <laughs> I thought you'd go a bit easy on me, you know, a bit of sympathy. Well, I've got sympathy, but never yeah. fear. The Running Channel audience have got you back and it's a sitting down challenge this month. Really easy, a gels taste test. Can you tell what flavour each of the five gels I give you is? I'm glad they've got my back. Yeah, but that does sound a bit too easy. Rick, we know you're partial to a gel on a long run, true? And we've heard your taste buds are pretty good. So let's put them to the test. Whilst blindfolded, you're going to taste five gels and you have to guess the flavor. Okay. How many can you guess correctly? Oh, this is going to be fun. Oh, here's Anna. Blindfold on, please. Oh, blindfold on. Yeah, sorry. Go. Number one. Oh. I'm going to be wired after this challenge. I've just realised <laughs> absolutely why. Mm. Lime. Lemon and lime. You can take your blindfold off. The one in front of you. Uh. <laughs> Mountain fuel orange sports jelly. It's orange. Number two. Got it all over myself. I feel so sticky. It's very berry like, very grapey. Oh, but what type of berry is it? What type of berry? Is it gooseberry? Gooseberry. Is that a berry? It is a berry. Yeah, gooseberry is a berry. Blindfold off. Oh my god. Oh, oh my hands are so sticky. OTE. Lemon and lime energy gel. Hang on, my taste buds in reverse. I've mm. Benjamin Button my own experiment here. Whew, I'll tell you what, with the blindfold on and all the sugar and caffeine, I feel like I'm going to Club 1830. <laughs> Next! <laughs> I had too much for that one. Is it passion fruit? Okay. Read it out. Science in sport raspberry. <laughs> what? Raspberry? Oh, I don't know what they're making raspberries out of nowadays, but that wasn't raspberry. Raspberry. All right. How many is that? Three? Yeah, two to go. Whoa! <laughs> okay, next. Oh my God. Ooh, funky packet. So, Anna. Yeah, just like that. This is one of my faves. We'll have to cut this. I need to, I need to get this right. Vanilla. Vanilla. <laughs> All that just for vanilla. Oh, it's berry. I said berry for the other one. That's an Ella's Kitchen. Ella's Kitchen. Berry, berry yogurt. yogurt. Uh, baby food. That's baby food. Mm -hmm. No way. No. Yeah. So it's not even a gel? No. Nope. That's what I have on ultras. Oh my gosh, you're feeding me baby food. That's what you think of me at this place. Right. Last one. Last one. Bring it on. Baby food. Oh my God. Rick couldn't do a taste test without me getting involved. I am going to put together the most disgusting concoction for him to try and guess what it is. <laughs> I need to go and see what's in my cupboards. Bit of juice, bit of beans. <laughs> Doesn't that look delightful? Let's mix it all together. Anna's secret weapon. Okay. Give it a squeeze from the bottom first. Is that it? No. <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> is that Tabasco? Take your blindfold off. Read it. Anna's secret weapon. On the card. Anna's secret weapon. Hot chilli, soy sauce, malt vinegar, cinnamon, lotus biscoff, 
Marmite and baked beans. <laughs> 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 I will be getting my own back on you, Anna. Yeah, yeah. You do know that, don't you? Yeah, yeah. That was disgusting. I can still taste it now. <laughs> we filmed that weeks ago. <laughs> I need cheering up. Should do my favourite bit of the show. My favourite. Go on then. Ask TRC. So if you've got a question for us to answer next month, make sure to email asktrc at therunningchannel.com, just like Holly Anderson from Stockton, California did. She asked, Hello Team TRC, I commute via bike to and from work five days a week, 11 miles each day. I've never considered this time to be part of my training, but should I? Well, Holly, first of all, I did a bit of a Google to see where Stockton, California is, and I'm delighted that it has a dog park called, wait for it, Barkleyville. Oh, get it. Anyway, great question and some tips for you. So do you wear a heart rate monitor like a watch, etc.? If you do, how does the average heart rate during your time on the bike compare to your average heart rate on different types of runs? It's probably something you do need to consider, but comparing heart rates will give you an idea of the relative stress on your body from each activity. So if you do log these rides using a watch or similar, then things like Garmin or platforms like Strava should be able to take them in to account in your training load scores, which give you an idea of how much training load you're putting on your body. Next up, Stephen asks, how do I prevent jogger's nipple? I've tried Vaseline and it doesn't work. Ah yes, the familiar pain of jogger's nipple. Well, I tend to pop plasters over them, actually, Anna, as a prevention. Gives you an extra layer between your skin and your t-shirt that way. Also, check the material your t-shirt is made from. Something like cotton won't do you any favors here. It needs to be a technical fabric uh, that wicks sweat away. And something else I tend to do, I mean, we do it here at the Running Channel anyway, I wear red in long races. Why is that, Rick? Because if it's bleeding, no one sees it. Oh, I didn't think of that. Oh my God. Keep up. Right. Thanks. Thanks for that, Rick. Some top tips there, and hopefully that helped you out. Next up, Pedro Bordalo emailed in to ask, becoming an Olympian, what are the most important aspects of the process? Um, I don't think that's one for us amateurs no. to answer. Over to the Running Channel's resident Olympian, Andy Badley, to answer this one. Andy! <laughs> First up is patience. It's a little bit boring, but it took me a long time to go from starting running at 10 or 11, right the way up to my peak mileage, which would have been close to 100 miles a week when I was in my mid 20s. Add to that luck, which is vital and actually not something that people like to touch on. But you'll see press conferences of athletes who've won medals saying, if you work as hard as me, then you could achieve this too. But at the very highest level, everybody's working incredibly hard. So you do need to acknowledge that actually luck plays a part too. I had some great years where I ran well and luck was definitely on my side and I had some years with injuries or where I made bad decisions as well. And then finally, you need to be single-minded. You need to block out all of the noise. There's a lot of people that are gonna tell you how you should do particular things. There's lots of information on the internet, a lot of opinion on social media. You need to be able to shut that out, focus on what you're doing, believe in it, and just get on with it. And finally, Brooke Wortham had a few questions. Top of the list, how's your knee, Rick? Well, oh, Brooke. Thanks so much for asking. It's doing all right. Trickiest thing is basically keeping the weight off it. It's gonna be a relatively long journey to get back. It's gonna be months, not weeks. Um, but the operation was successful. They drilled tiny little holes into my femur uh, in order to create some new cartilage. And hopefully new cartilage will grow over four to six weeks. And then it's a case of some really heavy, intense uh, rehab. But um, Manny's going to help you. Manny's out. going to help me out with yeah, that. So on, it's tough not moving. I'm stuck in it in the same room, sleeping in the same room for the first few weeks. But hopefully, yeah, we'll get there in the end. So Amazing. thanks for asking. When putting on your shoes to go for a run, do you do sock sock then shoe shoe or sock shoe sock shoe? For those wondering, Brock is a sock shoe sock shoe. Anna, what are you? Oh, great wow. question. I'm wow. sock, sock, shoe, shoe, because I like to make sure that the socks are all in the right place. There's no bumps and bits that are going to rub. Then make sure I put the right sock on the right and the left on the left. And then once I'm happy with the socks, the shoes can go on. You know what? I've never thought about it in my life. <laughs> 
at the moment, I've got one of those hospital socks on to help my blood flow. So oh, my yeah. socks are already on anyway. Um, so I would probably say... So you're just shoo-shoo. I'm just shoo-shoo. <laughs> Shoo! <laughs> Shoo! Shoo! That's all for now, but if you have a burning question for the team, make sure you drop it in the comments or you can email asktrc at therunningchannel.com and it could feature in our next show. Next up is the treadmill challenge with Zwift and our speedster physio is Manny Avola. And starting now, question number one. In what year did the film Chariots of Fire come out? Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then put that speed up. Question number two. How many Olympic gold medals does Sir Mo Farah have? Um, seven. Incorrect. <laughs> put the speed up. What is Canny Cross? Sorry? What is Canine Cross? What? Canine Cross? No idea. What is that? <laughs> uh, put that speed up. What is the men's track 5k world record to the nearest second? Um, 13 minutes, 42 seconds. No, incorrect. Put the speed up. Oh. What is another name for the thigh bone? Thigh bone? Fema. Yeah. Correct! Yes. <laughs> Who wrote the book, Jog On, How Running Saved My Life? Jog On, How Running Saved My Life? No idea. <laughs> okay, then put the speed up. <sighs> How many running events are in a decathlon? Running events? Uh, two. No, incorrect. <laughs> put the speed up. What year was the first Boston Marathon? 1968. No, incorrect. Ah, Who that, won? Oh. Those questions were hard. So hard. But I got up to a good speed. Hopefully I stayed on long enough. It's hard to run and think at the same time. Oh, Manny, what happened? I'd have put money on him taking the top spot. I know, even I beat him. Goes <laughs> to show, doesn't matter how quick of a runner you are when it comes to the treadmill challenge. Anyone you want to see take it on next month, tell us in the comments. Finally, it's to our miles and kilometers segment. Some quick fire running questions we pose to our friends in the world of running. This month, it's the turn of author of Run to the Finish and running coach, Amanda Brooks. I measure everything in miles. In fact, if I have to do kilometers, I have to go through a whole lot of math, starting with how long is a 5K. I'm a really big fan of podcasts, probably because I run longer distances and they help me kind of keep things easy. Right now, a lot of things like Conan, so really lighthearted stuff. Um, and then I'll also get into some of the sciencey stuff like Ben Greenfield Fitness. I have always measured my runs with distance, which is funny because coaching, I will use time for a lot of athletes, but for me, it's always been distance. One of the biggest parts of recovery to me, honestly, is just sleep. It's making time for it, ensuring that it happens, doing what I can to make sure that it's really deep quality sleep. I am thinking ahead right now to Chicago and fingers crossed like everyone else that it is a race that actually happens this year. Last year, I actually used the idea of Chicago to get me to a bigger goal that I had. So I started training for Chicago in the spring knowing that it was unlikely to happen, but I took that momentum and used it to run my first 50K. So that was a goal I've had for myself for a long time. Right now, I'm really inspired by, honestly, it sounds cheesy to a lot of people, but it's the everyday runner. It's the mom I see getting out there with the jogging stroller. It's the runners I see here in Colorado at six in the morning when it is zero degrees. 
that for me is more motivation than a lot of the elite running times. My best running memory, it might have been finishing that 50K this summer. So I did it completely on my own. Um, there was no race, there was no virtual race. It was just me picking a route. And then my husband showed up at like mile 20 to kind of act as support for me. And then met me again kind of around 27 and he ended up walk running off and on with me pieces of the end of it but when i finally hit that finish i just was so overcome with emotion i mean that feeling of i can't believe i actually did this and then adorable him he came running up with this medal that he had scrounged like every store in the area to find that morning um and i just started the waterworks all over again incredible stuff from amanda there not surprised she got emotional after finishing her first 50k and top husband points on getting her a medal too that is all from us this month. But as ever, we have a wonderful giveaway for our running channel viewers, courtesy of Wiggle. Last month's winner was Alice Wright. Congratulations. All you need to do to enter is click the link in the description and answer a question about the show that you've just watched. So I hope you were paying close attention. All the T's and C's can be found on the link too. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time on The Running Channel.